the benefit of Treasury, I think, is that you, it can apply to different sectors. It's not so industry specific. So you can get experience in different sectors. And like you say, I've telcos, pharmaceuticals for a long time. I'll come on to that. Some of the heavy industries, heavy building materials mm. and, and now energy sector. And it doesn't really matter to an extent. There are specifics in some of these industries, you yeah. know, specific financing arrangements you can get where I am now and in different industries. But generally, you know, as long as you understand the supply chain of the company, you are, you could kind of, you, you can adapt. The theme of my career, Mike, and I think a lot of treasury careers is that treasury is the first thing to disappear when a company gets taken over. Yep. So there's a lot of demergers and, and mergers and, and treasury is, you know, the new company wants to take over the cash, wants to take over the debt and the risk management. They, that's kind of at the forefront of their mind when they're coming in. Yeah. And so following the demerger, there was a merger. So <laughs> six months down the line or a year down the line, it might have been. Tarmac was small enough to be kind of snapped up by someone else. So I, at that stage, realized there was limited future because of what I said, Treasury's first to go yeah. at Tarmac. And I looked elsewhere. And that's where I found my, the role at Vodafone. So I moved from the Midlands down to down south on my own and yeah, moved to the, the first role in cash management of Vodafone. So that was a, a great career move for myself. Acquisition are quite good fun for Treasury. I think mm. everyone probably knows in the Treasury world in that you get involved in, you know, probably the merger agreement up front, then the financing, the bridge financing, potentially then the taking out the bridge financing, the hedging, the interest rate stuff, the FX exposures. So it's completely all encompassing the, the, an acquisition itself. Um, and even following, following the acquisition, there's the natural merger of their teams into your team and systems mm -hmm. into your team and processes into your team. So it's you know a full and all encompassing uh, time we, I, I spent at Shire and uh, yeah, but very valuable. It was difficult to plan, to be honest, right. because there were so many things in the pot at the same time and you weren't controlling the timeline. You're right. uh, you know, the BD team were controlling the timeline. So you just need to try and get a hold of the timeline and get a plan. So I, I, a lot of my role was planning, kind of, you know, uh, building up a project plan, allocating time and people and, you know, other teams to it. And then, you know, every week I'd throw away the plan and say, okay, I need to change the plan mm. <laughs> to this. And tr this is what we need to focus on. So it was, yeah, it was re really varied and, yeah, really stretched the kind of, you know, the mental and and, and the kind of, I guess, the thought processes and, and to make sure that you didn't drop the ball anywhere because that would mm. be the worst scenario. But yeah, we, we, we never dropped a ball and everything went through fine. And ultimately we made a $32 billion acquisition and financed that with the, you know, the biggest bond issued by UK corporate at the time, a $12 billion bond, which we won prize it. We won the uh, deal of the year at the ACT and mm. my team got commended as well in the Corporate Finance Award. So that's where we ultimately ended up. I, I guess the lesson that I learned through that was you need to be pragmatic and just adapt, I think, uh, mm. is, is the main thing and just be on your toes at all times, I think. I'm personally not a great one for a specific mentor, but I think there is some value in recognizing traits of people you respect and drawing them on them. I think that's quite important. So it might be four or five different people recognizing the valuable traits and applying them to yourself. I think that's that's something to consider and also make sure you're fortunate. <laughs> so essentially, yeah, I don't know how you do that exactly, but you, you know, you, you, you do need to kind of get your position yourself correctly but in the end there's a lot of fortune in, in the game being in the right place at the right time and I think when I recruit it's getting people who are on the same wavelength as you you know right. you can have a variety of different people with different perspectives different skills different backgrounds completely but you need to have some way to communicate with them and some kind of wavelength that you can both recognize that's I think the main thing and I think that is under valued when people recruit i think a lot of companies look at you know testing you know a, a psychometric test and yeah, yeah. doing the days and whatever they do you know monitoring people over a day and how they react in different situations that that's all great but in the end you want someone who's smart who knows what they're doing qualified and can communicate and that's the wavelength thing if you get someone the same wavelength it's so much more valuable for the short term medium and long term than any of the other things you can recognize in a, a psychometric test yeah. that's that's probably what i would say